Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer Practice Lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. If you like these labs, please consider supporting me via my Patreon or the cryptocurrency options in the description. This lab will be the last of our labs focused on static routing. In this lab, we will configure a backup static route, known as a floating static route, on R1. All routers are pre-configured with the routing protocol RIP, pronounced RIP. We haven't done any labs on routing protocols yet, but RIP configuration will be coming soon. We will configure R1 with a floating static route so that, in the event that its S30 interface fails, it will use the S20 interface instead to reach the 10.0.0.0 slash 24 network. Try to complete the lab yourself first, then continue watching if you have trouble, or watch the video after to check your solution. So, as it says in the lab, the routing protocol RIP is configured everywhere except between R1 and R3, meaning it's not activated for the S20 interfaces of R1 and R3. However, our goal is to configure what's called a floating static route, which will cause R1 to send traffic destined to the 10.0.0.0/24 network using its S20 interface when its route via R3 goes down. We actually only need one command to complete this lab, but let me explain some things first. If you have already learned these things in your studies, this can just be a review. Let me go on R1. Enable Show IP route. There are two connected routes, the 192.168.12.0 and 192.168.13.0 networks. R1 has also learned two routes from RIP, as indicated by the R here. One is the 192.168.23.0 network, which R2 advertised. Look right next to the address. There are two numbers here in square brackets, 120 slash 1. What do these numbers mean? First, the 1. This is known as the metric. The metric depends on the routing protocol, such as EIGRP, OSPF, or RIP. RIP uses hop count to calculate the metric. The metric of 1 here indicates one hop, as we can reach, reach it by a single router hop over to R2, to which it is a directly connected network. Now look at the entry for the 10.0.0.0 network. Its metric is 2. That is because there are two router hops to reach it, first to R2, then to R3, to which it is a directly connected network. The lower the metric, the more desirable the route. But there is one factor of higher priority than the metric. That is the administrative distance, which is the number to the left of the metric. In both cases, it is 120 because that is the default metric of a route learned from RIP. Because the administrative distance is higher priority than the metric, if a router learns multiple possible routes to a destination, it first compares the administrative distances and chooses the lowest distance route to put in the routing table. Only if the administrative distances are the same does it compare the metrics. Now, I said RIP has an administrative distance of 120, how about if we create a normal static route? Let's try. Conf t. Let's create a static route to the 10.0.0.0 network. IP route 10.0.0.0.255.255.255.0.192.168.13.3. I set the next hop to R3. Do show IP route. Well, now the route to 10.0.0.0, learned via RIP, isn't displayed in the routing table. It has been replaced with our static route because it has a lower administrative distance. The default administrative distance of a static route is 1, as you can see here. So, have we completed the lab? No, our instructions are to configure what's called a floating static route that is, a static route which is only entered into the routing table when the regular route is not available, such as when an interface goes down. How can we do that? Well, when configuring a static route, we can also specify the administrative distance for that route. If we specify an administrative distance higher than that of the RIP route, 
the static route will not appear in the routing table and thus not be used unless we stop receiving the rip route from R2 due to an interface failure or something. So let's undo our static route by putting no in front of the command. Now let's use the command again and here I'll use the context sensitive help question mark and you can see we can set the distance of the route. The administrative distance of rip is 120, so let's just set it to one higher, 121. Okay, now let's check the routing table again. Do show IP route. This time the static route is not displayed. Let's use the trace route command to ensure that it is still taking the path through R2 to R3. We haven't used the traceroute command yet in these labs, but it's very useful. It's like the ping command, but it sends a reply back from each router on the way to its destination, so you can trace the path it takes through the network. I'll trace to PC1. Do traceroute 10.0.0.11. As you can see, it is indeed going to R2, before going to R3 and then ending up at PC1. Now let's simulate an interface error. I'll turn off the S30 interface, which is connected to R2. Interface S30, shut down. Okay, now do show IP route. Our RIP routes are gone. However, immediately the floating static route which we configured takes the place of the previous route to 10.0.0.0. Let's try a trace route from uh, router 1 to PC1 again. Do traceroute 10.0.0.11. This time it goes straight to R3 and then ends up at PC11. Or sorry, PC1. Our floating static route is functioning exactly as intended. Now let's turn on this interface again. No shutdown. What do you think will happen? It can take a bit of time, but hopefully as I'm talking the process will finish. Currently, R2 is regularly sending RIP advertisements of its route to 10.0.0.0 to R1. Now that R1's S30 interface is up again, when R1 receives one of those advertisements on the interface, it will replace the floating static route in the routing table with the route learned by RIP, because the administrative distance of RIP is 120, and the floating static route we configured has an AD of 121. Okay, let's check. Do show IP route. As you can see, the floating static route is gone, and now the RIP route is back in the routing table. I hope this lab helped you understand a little about administrative distance and floating static routes. Soon we will do more labs focusing on routing protocols like EIGRP and OSPF, and also RIP, which we saw a little in this lab. That's all for the lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this, which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, let me know in the comment section. If you want to support my channel, please consider contributing to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Jeremy's IT Lab. I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a Brave Verified Publisher, and accept BAT, or Basic Attention Token, donations in the Brave browser.